All right, guys, it's that time again. It's time for another edition of Rare and Hard to Find CDs. Hello there, Internet. This is Olin from What I'm Listening To. I hope you all are continuing to stay safe, stay healthy, keeping those hands nice and clean, and you are continuing to wear that mask when you go outside. Yes, 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 you heard it here. We are back doing more rare and hard to find CDs. Since it's been a while since I've done one of these videos, let's review what categorizes a rare and hard to find CD and just talk about the general format of this show. There are a multitude of reasons of why a CD could be considered rare and hard to find. It could be because the CD is out of print. It could have been that the initial release was a limited edition. And it could even be that the CD never got a release in a specific country. So in this case, we're talking about the USA, it didn't get a release here, and therefore you have to import it from a different country. In some cases, the rare CD could be worth a good amount of money because it's a highly sought out album. But inversely, the CD may not be that sought out and therefore not worth some money, but copies are hard to come across. And in this show, we're going to be covering both cases. And I have two big stipulations when it comes to showing off the CDs. First things first, the CD cannot be a bootleg. It has to be an official release. And secondly, I do not include reissues of CDs unless the reissue itself is also rare. And to dive into the show's format, I will present a CD. I will then talk about the background of the CD and the band. I will describe the sound of the CD. And then I'll also take a closer look at the physical CD itself, including the album art and the booklet. I will then mention where you can acquire the CD or album. And this will range from digital services and physical services. For digital services, I will be focusing mainly on iTunes, Amazon, MP3 and Bandcamp. And for physical services, I will be focusing on Discogs, Amazon, and eBay. And also using Discogs, I will be looking at the lowest price someone paid for the CD, the highest price someone paid, and the median between those two numbers. Finally, I will disclose where I got my copy and how much I paid for it. So with all of that finally being said, let's dive in. And the first CD I have for you today I have Hurt's album, Self Entitled. Hurt was a band hailing from Virginia. They first formed in the year 2000, but disbanded in 2014. For the first six years of their career, they released a handful of albums independently before eventually signing on to Capitol Records. These later Capitol releases managed to get a little bit more attention from the general public and spawned some moderate radio hits like 10 Ton Brick, Wars, and Rapture. Unfortunately, they never quite got the same amount of attention as their contemporaries like Nickelback and Breaking Benjamin and all those other rock bands did. This CD was originally released in 2014 and it's a compilation containing old demos and unreleased material that were newly remastered for the first time. And to take a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. We can see the cover here and it's complete with a signature by Mr. J. Lauren himself. Uh, inside is not that exciting. Um, we have the disc in its tray here, and then uh, the hand-numbered copy. So this is number uh, 1,186. And then just the back, the track listing, and everything. The way I would describe this album sound is new metal, hard rock, post-grunge, alternative metal. Again, whatever you would want to describe bands like Breaking Benjamin and Nickelback to sound like. But one of the key ingredients that made this band sound so unique was the incorporation of the violin, which lead vocalist Jay Lauren played and would try to incorporate in most of the songs. It's definitely a unique instrument to add to new metal music, but it made their stuff sound much more artsy and prettier sounding. And like I said before, the stuff on here is all demos, so the recording quality is very rough around the edges. 
but it's still very heavy. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, the band released this on their website back in 2014 and limited it to only 2,000 copies. And according to the band's merch page, they had said the following. A very limited number of this album was printed one time only. Once the remainder of these are gone, they will not be made available again. And it now seems that all these copies were indeed sold, so the only way to get a copy is to get it secondhand. And unfortunately, there are no digital services that offer this album. You can't get it on iTunes, you can't get it on Amazon MP3, and you can't get it on Bandcamp. So once again, if you want to listen to this, you're gonna have to somehow buy the CD. As far as current listings go, there are currently none available on Discogs or Amazon or eBay. Where you're gonna get a copy of this, I don't know. You'll have to either put this on your watch list or just dig through record stores everywhere. Now getting into the Discog statistics, the lowest price someone paid for the CD was $30 even. The highest was $30 even. And the median between that was, well, $30 even. Where I got my copy of the CD, I was actually one of the people who pre-ordered it from their website when it was first announced. And as far as how much I paid for it, I don't remember. That was back in 2014. That was seven years ago. So that invoice is long, long gone. But I tried to find a way to access the original listing. I even used the Wayback Machine to access the band's website. And unfortunately, it would not display. But if I had to guess how much I paid for the CD, it was somewhere in the ballpark of $12 to $15 plus shipping. So I guess you could say I got it for a bargain, but I feel like I got lucky and I was able to jump on the occasion when it came and now it's hard to get a copy of this. But if you are a fan of rock music and you do happen to stumble across a copy, I highly, highly recommend it. I actually love this band. They were one of my favorites from when I was a teenager. I still love them today as an adult. Honestly, if you find any of their albums, I recommend them for sure, but this one definitely is a must grab if you're a collector. Cause they say it gets better Before it gets worse The next CD I have for you today, I have Shining Skull Breath by Jeffrey Cantu Ledesma. Jeffrey is a multi-instrumentalist originally hailing from Austin, Texas. He got his start in recording music when he moved to San Francisco for college, and there he formed the experimental post-rock band Torrental. And that band would put out dozens of albums between the years of 1999 and 2009. He also founded the record label Root Stata, which put out tons of stuff by fellow experimental artists like Grouper and One O Tricks Point Never. 2007 is when he started releasing solo music, but he still involved himself with other side projects here and there. Shining Skull Breath is his second album, which was originally released in 2007 on the Students of Decay label. The way I would describe the album sound is experimental. He incorporates elements of drone, noise, ambience, and shoegaze sometimes. And to get a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. The packaging on this one is uh, far from a jewel case. It's just a standard uh, envelope and uh, inside I believe is uh, a feather right there. Packaging is uh, just a cardboard envelope disc right here and uh, number 40 little print out there that you can tell was just put on standard uh, white paper and cut out and I don't think there's anything else in here. There's not. It's just this here. Now, why is the CD rare? Well, the original release was only limited to 100 copies and was only released on the CDR format. In 2011, the album would be re-released on the vinyl format with newly remastered tracks as well as two bonus songs, but even these vinyl copies are very limited. As far as where you can get the album, you can easily buy it on iTunes, Amazon MP3, and Bandcamp, but these editions are the remastered versions with the bonus tracks. And looking at listings for a copy of the CD, Discogs has some listings between $5 even and $19.03. Amazon, unfortunately, has no listing, 
but eBay does have one listing for it going for $12.49. But looking at the Discog stats for the CD, the lowest price someone paid for it was $7 even, the highest was $22 even, and the median between that was $12.50. Now, where did I get my copy of the CD? Well, I managed to snag mine on Discogs, and I only paid $13 even plus shipping. Like I said in the intro, this CD is not that sought out and therefore really isn't worth that much money, but since it is limited to only 100 copies, actually finding one out in the wild even is pretty difficult. However, if you are a fan of drone and ambient music, then I highly, highly, highly recommend Jeffrey's music. This album, I feel like, is one of his best. And I will leave a link to his band camp in the description below because everybody should listen to at least one of his albums. He's an amazing, amazing musician. And also, shout out to Jeffrey for being willing to answer some questions I had for him. I reached out to him on Instagram just to get some information about him and he was very happy to do so. So thank you very much, Jeffrey, and go check out his music. He is amazing. CD I have for you today, I have Ilyas Ahmed's Century of Moonlight. Ilyas Ahmed is a musician originally hailing from Pakistan before moving to the US, where he lived in New Jersey, Minnesota, and eventually settling in Portland, Oregon. He got a start in music by recording material on an isolated farm and releasing these recordings on CDRs, but his future albums would be released by independent labels on the CD, vinyl, and cassette format. Ilyas would also collaborate with other experimental musicians like Grouper, who also lives in Portland, as well as Jeffrey Cantu Ledesma. And he is also a member of the post-rock band Grails. Century of Moonlight was originally released in 2006. It's the fourth album in his discography, but it's also the first album to be released on a label, that label being Time Law Records. The way I would describe the album's sound is experimental folk, psychedelic folk, lo-fi, and even some elements of ambience and drone. Taking a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. This one's packaged pretty similar to that of Jeffrey's. Uh, it's got this uh, plastic envelope here. Um, I don't think this is, uh, yeah, this is just a, a fold out here. So it's got the hand numbered uh, copy. This is number 25 out of 222. Time lag records, the uh, track listing right here. And then uh, inside, all that's in here is just this insert. Nothing much to it. And then uh, the disc and an envelope here. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, physical copies of this album were only ever released on the CDR format, and only 222 copies exist, all of which were hand numbered by Ilyas himself. You can buy a digital copy of the album on Ilyas's Bandcamp, but you cannot get it on iTunes or Amazon MP3. So I will leave a link to his Bandcamp in the description below, just so you can check it out. As far as getting a physical copy goes, there is currently one listing on Discogs going for $11.90. However, there aren't any listings for it on either Amazon or eBay. But looking into the Discog stats for the CD, the lowest price someone paid for it was $3.49. The highest was $10 even, and the median between that was $8 even. Now, where did I get my copy? Well, I got mine on Discogs, and I paid an even $8 plus shipping. I absolutely love Ilyas's music. Everything that man does is phenomenal. His later stuff is definitely a lot more refined sounding compared to this stuff, but if you come across any of his material, especially physical releases, then I would definitely grab them. Ilyas, if you're watching, I love your music. You keep doing you. CD I have for you today, I have Second and 18 
by Honest Bob and the Factory to Dealer Incentives. For the sake of this band's long ass title, I'm just gonna be referring to them as Honest Bob. It's just, it's just easier. Honest Bob was originally formed in Boston, Massachusetts by four MIT undergrad students in 1992. Not a whole lot is really known about the band, but they did get a small following because their music was featured on early releases of Guitar Hero and Rock Band games. Their song Soy Bomb was featured as a bonus track in Guitar Hero 2, while their song I Get By was featured as a bonus track in Rock Band 1. And this CD is their second release, which originally came out in 2004. The way I would describe this album's sound is, I guess in general terms, alternative rock, but they're a little bit more than just that. The thing that really makes these guys so unique is their quirky lyrics. They have songs that cover topics like pushing your significant other's buttons, the benefits of speaking a language, uh, Tatooine from Star Wars, and even the character Leopold, who would kick your ass in playing violin and organ. For comparison's sakes, I would say they're very, very similar to the band They Might Be Giants, and even the presidents of the United States of America, minus the grunge elements of that band. They're really silly, but they're really fun to listen to. Taking a deeper dive into the CD, we can see the following here. This one is just packaged in a standard jewel case here. Inside we have uh, the disc, and then the uh, insert, there's not much to it. We have uh, the liner notes there on who did what, picture of the band in all their glory, and that's about it. Apart from uh, the back here, the track listing, and a dog, and a football. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, since the band is as small as they are, all of their albums were released independently. The label that put this CD out is called Zero Down Entertainment, which I did a bit of a search to see what else they put out. And as it turns out, they've only released music by this band. I assume this is a label that was started by the band themselves, or it's a friend's label that just happened to only release their music. I'm not entirely sure. There's not a lot of information about them. I assume the band only made limited quantities to, again, sell at their shows or sell online or give to their friends, who knows. And again, I've talked about CDs like this before. This is one of those ones where it's not that sought after and therefore it's very cheap to find, but Finding a copy itself is tricky. You can thankfully buy this album digitally on iTunes and Amazon MP3, just not on Bandcamp. And as far as getting a physical copy goes, there are no listings anywhere. There are none on Discogs, there are none on Amazon, and there are none on eBay. Very quick update, as I was editing this video, I found that there is actually one listing for the album on Amazon, and it's going for $902.81, so, that exists. If you really want that album, and if you have $900 to spare, then knock yourself out. And because of this, the lowest price, the highest price, and the medium between that is all nothing. <clears throat> nothing is available, because nobody has bought a copy on Discogs. So where in the hell did I get my copy? Well, I managed to find this very CD at Rasputin Records in Berkeley, and I only paid $1.95 for it. This is again, one of those situations where this album is not that sought out and therefore is not worth some money. But if you want a copy, you're gonna be doing some hunting. And I just happened to be lucky to find a copy of it at a record store. So if you want a copy of the CD, put it on your watch list and dig through every single clearance section you can find at a record store. I'm sure you're bound to find something and hopefully it's cheap. I say William Shakespeare had the right idea Put your passion in a poem she won't hear If your heart is whole again, you can publish it next year And every time I see your neck, I wanna kiss it And I know I'll never kiss it I get by, I get by The next CDs I have for you today is actually going to require another one of these guys. I got a double feature here. These two albums are both by The Replacements. I have Don't Tell a Soul and All Shook Down. The Replacements, what can I say about them? They're legendary. They're one of the world's best rock bands of all time. They were notorious for their onstage antics that were typically fueled by booze, and this either led to their performances being amazing or completely sloppy. But I don't want to talk about the history of the band, because that's a whole other video onto itself. 
What you should know is, again, they're one of the best bands to ever exist, and rightfully so. Their music is amazing. These two albums were their final releases, and compared to their earlier works, weren't quite as successful, but still not bad in retrospect. Don't Tell a Soul was originally released in 1989, and All Shook Down was originally released in 1990, both on Sire. But in 2006, Rhino Records would release their entire catalog that also included tons and tons of bonus tracks on each album. To describe the sound for both of these albums, again, very different from the earlier works. The earlier works were more edgy, punky, and much more tongue-in-cheek sounding, while these guys are much more laid back, acoustic guitar forward, and a bit more serious sounding. The overall vibe of both albums is kind of love ballad -y sounding, and that's just thanks to the direction Paul Westerberg was going. And taking a closer look at these CDs, we can see the following here. These ones are both packaged in uh, standard jewel cases, and we'll just go through them one by one here. So uh, cover of Don't Tell a Soul. Uh, and then inside we have uh, some crazy art on the disc here. Um, Rhino has their thing advertising more uh, replacements material that some is harder to find than others. And then the booklet inside here, it's got uh, a pretty lengthy write-up of the band and the uh, making of this record, as well as some photos of the band and uh, their singles during this era. A very different era from uh, older replacements material. And then All Shook Down, probably going to be more of the same here, so uh, crazy artwork on the disc. There's no insert from Rhino on this one. But uh, the booklet inside here has uh, yet another write-up, more photos of the band from this era. It's mostly just uh, Paul and Tommy at this point. And the backs on each, you can see um, Don't Tell a Soul, all the bonus material on there, and then uh, all the bonus material on this one. Now, why are these CDs rare? Well, like I said, Rhino Records reissued the band's entire catalog with bonus tracks. For some reason, the albums that were originally put out by Sire, those reissues are harder to find than their independent releases. This isn't the first time I've talked about a replacements reissue on this video series. I talked about Tim in one of the rare and hard to find CD volumes. The same thing goes. I'm not entirely sure why these particular albums are so damn difficult to find. My assumption is they're just now out of print, but that's only an assumption. I have no idea why. If you happen to know why Tim through All Shook Down on Rhino Records are so rare to find, then please leave a comment down below and tell me what's going on. But acquiring a digital copy for these deluxe editions is easy. You can get them on both iTunes and Amazon MP3, complete with the bonus tracks. You just can't get them on Bandcamp. And looking at listings for the CDs online, Discogs has some listings going for between $50 to $90 even. Meanwhile, Amazon has some copies going for between $20 and $50 cents to $28.37, and then eBay has some listings between $19.99 and $24.99. And All Shook Down's listings goes as following. Discogs has some listings going for between $25 even to $149.99. eBay has a listing going for $30 even, and Amazon, they have listings for between $29.64 to $59.96. Which does bring me to my next point. If you are shopping for these particular editions online, be very, very careful. Make sure that they are put out by Rhino and not Sire. It could easily be mistaken that you think you're getting the Rhino version and you end up getting the Sire version. And looking at the Discog stats for both albums, Don't Tell a Soul, the lowest price someone paid for the CD, was $7.99. The highest was $39.98, and the median between that was $16 even. For All Shook Down, the lowest price someone paid was $9.99. The highest was $89 even, and the median between that was $16 even. I got my copy of Don't Tell a Soul on eBay, and my copy of All Shook Down on Discogs. The price I paid for eBay, I don't remember. I bought it as a guest, 
didn't log into my account, so that invoice is long gone. But the price I paid for All Shook Down was $16 even, plus shipping. I had initially written these albums off because I wanted to hear more material that sounded like Tim or Hoot Nanny or Let It Be, and this just sounded pretty weak in comparison. But over time, they both warmed up to me, and again, they're not quite as good as the early releases, but they're still pretty decent. They have some highlight moments. And if you happen to find these Rhino versions out in the wild for a pretty decent price, then definitely pick them up, because they're rare, and I don't know why. Someone tell me, please. I really want to know. The next CD I have for you today, I have Lowe's I Could Live in Hope. Lowe is a trio hailing from Minnesota, and they've been making music since the early 90s. They were founded by members Alan Sparhawk and Mimi Parker, who are both married and still remain to be the only consistent members of the band. They would cycle through various bassists throughout their career, but I think the one that's currently in the band has been in the band the longest. Fact check me on that. In the world of underground music, Lowe is famous, and this is because they helped pioneer a genre known as slowcore. Slowcore is a genre categorized by bleak lyrics, slow downbeats, very somber sounding melodies, and at times, very minimal arrangements. Other bands like Codeine and Bedhead would help contribute to the sound as well, but Low was always a bit more mellower sounding in comparison to those guys. This CD was originally released in 1994. It's the band's very first album, and it's considered one of the best slowcore albums to exist. Describing the album's sound, well, I kind of already did when I described what slowcore was. Very bleak, somber, quiet, emotional. It's a really, really sad listen. But one of the key things about Lowe's sound is the harmonies between Alan and Mimi. They just sound so beautiful and very reminiscent of old 60s folk. And taking a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. This one's packaged in just a standard jewel case. Um, inside we have a kind of purple disc here. And then uh, the insert has the track listing right there. And uh, not a lot in here. This is their first album, so they probably were going for kind of a minimal approach. So yeah, we have uh, Alan, Mimi, and John on bass, produced by Kramer, which is a pretty cool thing to see. And then in the back, we also have the track list once again. Now, why is this CD rare? Well. This is kind of a weird circumstance because I'm actually not quite sure why it's rare. In fact, I wasn't even sure if I was going to feature this album on this video because I'm not convinced that it's rare. And here's what I mean by that. So I checked out listings for the album on Discogs and found that the prices were very, very high. Higher than I would have expected this to be. However, at Amoeba Music in San Francisco, I have seen one or two copies of this in the low section, and they're priced pretty average. In fact, a little cheaper. Honestly, I don't know what's going on. It could be be rare and maybe the record stores don't charge as high as the online listings? Who knows? My guess is the CD is currently out of print, but again, that's a guess. If you happen to know any information about why it might be so expensive online, then please leave a comment down below and tell me what's going on. And as for listings for the physical CD copy go, Discogs has some listings going for between $38 even to $174 even. Some of these sellers are international. Amazon, unfortunately, does not have any listings, but eBay has a listing going for $54.94. And looking at the stats on Discogs, the lowest price someone paid for the CD was $19.99. The highest was $107.04, and the median between that was $41.67. Now, where did I get my copy of the CD? Well, I managed to snag my copy at a record store called The Last Record Store in Santa Rosa, and I only paid $7.99 for it. 
Like I said, I don't exactly know if this album is as rare as people are making it out to be. Clearly folks online think it's worth some money, but I would check local record stores if you're trying to seek out a physical copy. You might find one that's as cheap as mine was, if not cheaper. And if you manage to find a copy, then buy it. Not even for a collecting sake, but because it's a beautiful album. Sure, it's sad and depressing, but if you like that stuff or you need something sad and depressing to listen to, then this is your album right here for you. The next CD I have for you today, I have Agalock's White Division Grey. Agalock was a band hailing from Portland, Oregon, and was beloved by the metal community. They originally formed in 1995, but sadly broke up in 2016 after releasing one amazing album after another. I personally was saddened by their breakup because, well, they're my favorite metal band of all time. One of the distinct features about the band is each album seemed to have a varying sound. At the core, they're a metal band, but they loved to experiment and therefore every album brought something new. To list off some of the things they've done, they've done black metal, folk metal, death metal, post metal, pagan metal, the, the list goes on. But this release is different. This is actually a compilation between two EPs they released, The White and The Grey. And just to preference something, the release history for The White and The Grey is a bit complicated, so just bear with me when I talk about this. So The Grey was originally released in 2004, and The White was originally released in 2008. This release, this compilation between the two EPs, was originally released in 2011 on vinyl, and then in 2012, it was released on CD. And at the time, it was the first time since the initial pressings that these EPs were released on physical media. And then later in 2019, both EPs would be released again on CD and vinyl, but they weren't released in one package deal, they were released individually. And I don't want to cover those because it's just gonna overcomplicate things. So we're just gonna stick to this one compilation. And on the topic of this compilation, let's dive into its packaging because it's beautiful. The packaging on this one is lovely. So it's in this sort of a uh, hardcover type book here, um, very minimal looking. And then when you open it up, we have a uh, first disc right here. This is uh, the white. And then uh, we have some uh, pages of a uh, spooky looking art. some uh, information in the track listing here. And then this is uh, art from the gray. All very similar. And then uh, when we get to the other side, you can see the disc for the gray. Describing the sound of these EPs, like I said, they're much different from their other albums. The White is barely a metal record. It's a neo-folk dark ambient album with some hints of metal incorporated here and there. But it also incorporates samples from the movie The Wicker Man. No, not the Nick Cage one, the original one. And that adds this new level of creepiness. It's a creepy listen in general, but those samples just really make it that much more freaky. Meanwhile, The Grey is a much more experimental sounding EP. It originally only had two pieces, the first being a bare bones post-metal song, and the second piece was a very long and noisy drone piece. The cool thing about this release is each disc has bonus material attached to it, and in their respective sounds, the white's bonus material is more folky sounding stuff, and the gray's material is more experimental sounding stuff. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, 
Initial CD pressings of this compilation were only limited to a thousand copies. And again, it's not like it's hard to get the white and the gray by themselves because they were reissued in 2019. But if you want the bonus material that appears on this compilation, that's tricky because, again, there are only a thousand CD copies of this that exist. And as far as getting a copy of The White and the Grey goes, they're both available on iTunes, Amazon MP3, and on Bandcamp. But unfortunately, those are the 2019 reissues. So again, if you want the bonus material that's only exclusive to this compilation, you gotta get this. It's not available digitally. And as for listings for getting a CD copy of it, there are currently a couple listings on Discogs going for $39.99 to $83.26. But unfortunately, Amazon and eBay do not have any listings as of right now. And looking at the Discog stats for this compilation, the lowest price someone paid was $20 even. The highest was $39.41, and the medium between that was $40 even. Now, where did I get my copy of the compilation? Well, I got mine on Agalock's website when it was initially released for pre-order, and I only paid $20 plus shipping for it. I'm glad I have this compilation for a couple different reasons. One being it's a collector's item, which I didn't expect it to be, but the main reason is because how much I love the White EP. I have a tradition where I listen to the EP when Halloween comes around because, again, it just evokes this dark and creepy atmosphere that's unlike anything else I've listened to. And The Grey is also a great album. As a fan of experimental music, I love that one too. I like The Whites a little bit more, and the the fact that they're both packaged together here is awesome. But even if you can't get your hands on this particular compilation, I still encourage you to check these EPs out individually. They're both phenomenal. You can listen to them on their Bandcamp, which I'll leave a link in the description. And if you like them, just buy the individual CDs. next CD I have for you today, I have The Haunted House by Piha. Piha, which is Korean for ruined, is a one-man project founded by musician Jang Seong Jin, which I know I'm mispronouncing your name and I'm so, so sorry. Now, I wasn't really able to find a whole lot of information about this guy, but something I did find on Discogs was Jang is involved with some other comedic projects through the Santrophy Records. The Haunted House is Piha's very first album. It was originally released on CD in 2002 only in South Korea, but it was eventually reissued and released in the US in 2008. This particular version is the US release, but both versions are still very hard to find. The way I would describe this album sound is very, very, very rough and depressive sounding black metal. Quite literally, everything sounds completely blown out on the album, but that somehow adds to the heaviness of it all. There are some occasional dark ambient moments on the album, but even those are very lo-fi sounding. Taking a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. This one's packaged as a digipack, as you can see. Um, we can open it up and see super creepy photography. Disc right in the center. The collage on this looks really, really good. Um, I think it really evokes how the music on this sounds. And then you can see more underneath the tray there. And then the back, you can see there's some, some liner notes. And then the back has the track listing in uh, Korean. Now, why is this CD rare? Well, the initial South Korean release was only limited to 200 copies. The 2008 US reissue was released on a label called Tumult Records. So I naturally went on their website to see if maybe you could buy a copy of it on the website itself and not have to rely on Discogs, eBay, and Amazon. However, when I clicked on the URL, I was redirected to a page showing that tumultrecords.com is for sale. I assume this means that the label is not functioning anymore and therefore is not pressing new copies of the CD, but 
Who's to say? And unfortunately, you are unable to get a digital copy on iTunes, Amazon MP3, or Bandcamp. You gotta rely on finding the physical CD copy. As for listings for the CD goes, Discogs has a couple going for between $9.72 to $29.74. And some of these are international sellers. Amazon, unfortunately, does not have any listings, but eBay does have one listing for it going for $165. Looking at the Discog stats for the US release of the CD, the lowest price someone paid was $4.99. The highest was $39.99, and the median between that was $9 even. Now where did I get my copy of the CD? I managed to find one in the metal section at Amoeba San Francisco, and I only paid $14.99 for it. This isn't the first time I've talked about the CD on one of my videos. I mentioned it on one of my Halloween vlogs, and for good reason, because it's a pretty freaky sounding album. I didn't realize exactly how rare it was until I looked into it, and god forbid I find a copy of the South Korean release. But either way, if you happen to find this version or the initial pressing, then definitely grab a copy of it. It is very, very, very good. If you are a fan of black metal, this is an essential listen right here. All right, internet, we are down to the final CD. And that CD is, of course, Death Clock's The Death Album. Now, most of you probably already know who Death Clock is, but for some reason, if you don't, they are a fictional band that started on a TV show called Metalocalypse. The idea behind the show was to focus on the members of this band and their day-to-day -day lives, the shenanigans they get into, and their impact on the world. And this CD is, I guess you could call it a compilation of songs that were featured on the first season of the show, including the show's opening theme. But there were two versions of the album that were released, a standard version and a deluxe version. The standard version has the original 15 tracks, plus a hidden bonus track, which is the Metalocalypse theme, and the deluxe edition has all that, plus seven additional songs and a music video for one of the tracks. The way I would describe this album's sound is, well, death metal. Pure, unadulterated death metal. That's the band's name. Taking a closer look at the CD, we can see the following. This one's packaged in a standard jewel case, but unlike the other ones, there are two discs instead of one. So there's disc one and disc two. This one has all the bonus content on it. Um, my copy, unfortunately, has this hole right here, and I think it's because it's, yeah, it's punching out the barcode. Um, but still a nice clean copy. And then the insert here, uh, I believe, is a little more extended. Yeah, so we have uh, lyrics here from uh, each song. Some liner notes on this side, too. And then um, the back cover. You can see uh, disc one's got a bunch of stuff. Disc two has all the bonus stuff. Yeah. Now, why is this particular version of this album rare? Well, the straightforward answer is it was released as a limited edition. I tried to look up and see if there was a reasoning for it being a limited edition or how many copies of it were released, and I couldn't find that information. My guess is it was a promotional stunt to get people to buy the album, a kind of get it while you can move, and trying to spark interest with collectors and fans of the show. Thankfully, you are able to get a digital version of the deluxe edition on iTunes. You can get the standard version on Amazon MP3, and you can't get either on Bandcamp. As for listings for the physical CD go, Discogs has some listings going for between $14 even and $45 even eBay has a listing going for $15 even, and Amazon, well, they have a listing going for $342 even. And according to the Discog stats for this, the lowest price someone paid for it was $4.98. The highest was $49.99, 
and the median between that was $24.90. And where did I get my copy? Well, again, the metal section at Amoeba Music San Francisco, and I only paid $19.99 for it. And I gotta say, I am really glad I got a physical copy of this album. I remember when it first came out and being super into the song Thunder Horse because it was featured on Guitar Hero 2, and I bought the deluxe edition immediately and listened to it over the years. And when I found this CD copy for the price it was, I thought it was a little high, but I didn't really think it was considered rare. I just thought, well, you know, I guess that's just the price it is, and I bought it. Crazy to think that it's going for as high as it is, especially on that Amazon listing. But if you're a fan of death metal and or metal apocalypse, and you haven't listened to this, then do yourself a favor, check this out. It's a really cool album from a death metal standpoint, and it's also really fun to listen to from a comedy standpoint. Alrighty then, internet, that does it for me. If you have any rare CDs or vinyl or even cassettes in your collection, I would love to hear what they are and how much you paid for it and even how much they're going for. Leave a comment down below and circulate some conversation. If you also like this video, be sure to hit that subscribe button. It'll show me the support and I'll love your face for it. And you can also follow me on Instagram for even more music. I post a new album on there semi-frequently, talk a little bit about it, and it gives you a bit of an insight of what else is in my collection. So thank you all so very much for watching. Tune in next time for another edition of Rare and Hard to Find CDs in the works. But until then, this is Olin from What I'm Listening To signing out. Goodbye. <laughs>